three minutes with ARC-2. I'm a radiological scientific officer, and this is our, our fallout shelter, our nuclear survival complex. One of the most confusing things to many people is about the nature of half-life of radiation. And in this video, I plan to show you how it works. Radiation is much like a bear getting them out of the cave. To get out, it has to go out half the distance first. Once it does, then half the remaining distance remains. And then still half that distance remains. If each of the time of when I made one of these bowls was 30 years, then on the fourth bowl to 120 years, we'd still have this much radiation left. It will continue to decay over every 30 years to half the amount remaining. Some people are very concerned about that some radiation might last a million years. That means, or have a half-life of a million years, they will tell you. If that means that in a million years, it'll take that long for the radiation to reach half its amount. And another million years for it to reach half that amount. This simply means that that kind of radiation is our friend because none of us are going to be around for a million years to receive even half of the radiation that that isotope puts off. One of the most confusing things to people about radiation is the concept of the nature of half-life. As radiation decays, it gives off its energy over a period of time. And we call the half-life the time that it takes for it to give off half of its energy. It's sort of like a match. As the match burns, it burns up the stick and half of its match is gone eventually. And as the match burns, it gives off less and less heat as it goes down. Much the same way a thing happens with half life. Likewise, with radiation, the question is, when will it ever reach zero? The answer is, in fact, is seemingly never. But in practicality, it will eventually reach a point where it is so low that it's insignificant. What happens is the parent radiation changes into the daughter isotope, the parent isotope to the daughter isotope, and the daughter isotope is inert. It does not give off radioactivity. Sometimes some people who wish to scare us tell us that the half-life of some radiation is hundreds of thousands or millions of years. And yes, that is true. But that radiation is our friend because we're not going to be around hundreds of thousands or millions of years to get half of its radiation. Most radiation has a very, very short life of milliseconds, microseconds, nanoseconds, or even shorter. So that is literally gone in a flash. With modern nuclear weapons, the radiation dissipates so quickly that it cannot even get out of the crater that's created by the powerful nuclear bombs. However, some of the radiation goes up into the air, attached to particles as particles of fallout. And these longer terms, not ones that disappeared in that first second of a flash, but ones that last for hours, days, weeks, they blow along and fall out, and that radiation is the one type that is a problem. So it's not the short-term radiation or that happens in milliseconds, nanoseconds, that it gives away its energy, or the long-term radiation that takes thousands or hundreds of thousands of millions of years to disappear that is a problem. It's that intermediate ranges of radiation that usually last few hours or a few weeks. But there are 
some particular isotopes that causes a particular problem because their duration is in and their half-life is generally about 30 years and these are isotopes of cesium and strontium for these there takes there is needed a particular type of defense because they will create a very serious problem for agriculture in the paper and on our website I go into various defenses about this radiation but in the future people will have to learn how to deal with it iodine-131 is another form of isotope radiated radioactive isotope that causes particular problems but I deal with that one in another video you can see the list of our entire set of videos on our webpage, www.webpal.org. Thank you for watching. And please remember that R2 is not just about your survival, it's about service to humanity and preparing to reconstruct society. It's the end of the world. It's the end of the world.